Here we are. The Ten Commandments. <clears throat> You've been hearing from me for these last few weeks. Uh, you'll know what I've been saying, that these are words to God's people after their salvation. For them back then, it was them being saved from the punishment in Egypt, and they were saved by that being led by Moses. That's the context. After they are liberated from Egypt, after they are liberated from after they are liberated from oppression, God says, "You are my people. This is how you now live. Here's the family values." For us today, we have been saved. We have been experienced the exodus out of the punishment of sin, led by the person and work of Jesus. Jesus has made it possible for us to start a new life, a joyful pilgrimage of progressive purity onwards and upwards until eternity. Because of Jesus, you can step forward to the open all invitation to become one of God's people. Because of Jesus, you can draw near to God. You can receive a fresh start from God. You can respond to God's invitation to come home. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so we've been looking at the Ten Commandments, which have been framed. I've been framing them like this. God's saying, you are my people, which means you're not going to look like all the other people. As God's people, we are to practice what he practices, love what he loves, act how he acts, hate what he hates. We are not to act around the locals. We are not to act like the locals around us, but more like the God who made us and loves us. The Ten Commandments, instructions for God's people in living with him, for him, in honor of him. So we start our last, second last one. Here is commandment number nine. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not lie. Do not bend the truth. Do not conflate, inflate what is not there to do. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. How can God call us to say this? How can God say this and call us to this? Because God doesn't do this, it's not in God's character. Do you know what it says in God's word in 1 Titus, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began. God never lies. Numbers 23 reminds us, God is not man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said? And will he not do it? God doesn't lie. If you want to God's people, you're not to lie. You're not to bear false witness. Jesus models this to us perfectly as well. When God puts on flesh and steps onto the stage of human history, Jesus doesn't lie. Jesus comes and he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Writing of Jesus, Peter, one of his disciples, he says, he committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Isn't that interesting? He could have just said he committed no sin. Bonus points, neither was deceit found in his mouth. And as John writes of the biography of Jesus, he introduces Jesus when he enters in. He says, he comes full of grace, full of truth. As we look at God and look at Jesus, command number nine is a good gift for us. Do not lie. Do not lie. I can imagine if all people took this value seriously. Imagine if this was a value in our modern society. We'd see trust we'd see harmony. Societies would be built on trust. It would be leading to deeper relationships and stronger communities. It'd be a world where contracts were unnecessary because everyone's word is their bond. Business and personal relationships, international, discipline, international diplomacy, it would all flourish.
You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. God has not organized this world to flourish or function with lying. He's a good designer. And so he says, don't lie. Don't deceive. Don't bend the truth. Don't inflate your stories. Don't lie. It protects society. By not lying, it protects society. It protects us. Like, who loves the truth here? Anyone? I mean, I, we love the truth, right? Yeah, Joash has got a hand up. And man, like, he's not even, a, he's not even Pentecostal. Man. No, no, it's all right. We still believe in the ongoing use of all the gifts. He's charismatic. But anyway, we'll step off that one. We love truth. We love sincerity. We love honesty. Even when there's bad news, we prefer, we appreciate truth. Who wants to go to the doctor and be like, all right, oh, thank you. Thanks for coming in today to see me. All right, I'm just going to pull up your results here. Am I right? Oh, gee, that's... It says here that you're going to be okay. It says that you're going to have a rich and fulfilling life. No one appreciates that. Even when the diagnosis, the prognosis is severe. Even when it's like, mate, you've got a week left to live. We'd prefer that than a lie, wouldn't we? It promotes flourishing. It also provides a pulse check to our own soul. Yet is this how we live? Is this how society runs? Mm -mm. The devil, the deceiver, the father of lies introduces to us and is cause of uh, us buying into his, what he thinks the plan should be, introduces lying, introduces a lack of trust, introduces lying, introduces corruption, introduces lying, introduces us to darkness. We lie. We lie to others. You've all done it. I've done it. We've all done it. Let's just not, let's just, let's just call a spade a spade. We lie to others and we lie to ourselves. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Can you love your neighbor as yourself? Or can you love yourself as God says to love your neighbor? Can you love yourself as God says to love your neighbor? We lie to others. We lie to ourselves, don't we? Yeah, I'll be okay. I need this. Compared to them, I'm, I know that they've said this, but there's nothing I can do. Name your negative self-affirmation. We lie to others. We lie to ourselves, and in turn, we lie to God. God says it, don't lie. God shows us in Jesus what it's like not to lie, yet we continue to lie. What are we to do? Well, God says that one day he's going to completely remove this type of behavior from the earth. God says that one day everyone is going to have to give account for lying. Proverbs 19, it says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. The Bible also says in Proverbs 6, there are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord amongst brothers. Proverbs 12, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Matthew 12, the words of Jesus, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. What are we to do?
The answer is to understand what's a lie and what's true. The answer is to understand what lives we've been told and what truth we need to believe. There are a number of lies that are told in this world. His eight lies the devil will seek to tell you. There is no God. Truth is relative. You can be your own God. This life is all there is. Happiness is found in wealth and pleasure. Humanity is inherently good. Religion is the cause of all wars and suffering. You are the master of your own life. Those are lies. We sit in those lies and we believe those lies and we live and we live consistently with those lies. We get caught up with those lies and we make decisions based on those lies. And that's not only the lies the devil will tell, that tell the world. He's got some very specific lies that the devil will tell Christians too. Are you a follower of Jesus here? Perhaps these will sound familiar to you. God doesn't really love you. Your sins are too great to be forgiven. You need to earn God's favor. You are alone in your struggles. God's promises don't apply to you. You can manage sin on your own. Serving God is too difficult and it's not worth it. Your suffering means God has abandoned you. All lies. All lies. We need to know which are the lies so that we can, re- so we can course correct, don't we? We need to know that there's a path that we're on is wrong so we can step off onto another one. We need to know when we're in darkness so we can run towards the light. Those are the lies. Here's the truth. Here's eight truths for the world. God exists and is sovereign. God is the creator of all things. Truth is found in God. Life has eternal significance. True happiness is found only in God. Humanity is fallen and needs redemption. Humanity is created in God's image. And salvation is available through Jesus Christ. And are you a Christian here today? Eight truths for you too. God loves you unconditionally. Your sins are forgiven in Christ. You are saved by grace through faith. God is always with you. God's promises are for you. You have the Holy Spirit. Serving God is a source of joy and fulfillment. Your suffering has a purpose. John 16, 13 says, from Jesus, when the spirit of truth comes, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. Do you feel the Holy Spirit guiding you in truth today? Do you feel a sense to need to course correct upon reflecting on commandment number nine, do not lie? What is it that you have to unbelieve? What is it that you have to start believing truly? How is it that you need the Holy Spirit to be at work in your heart? The fruit of that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Whoever desires to, 1 Peter, whoever desires to love life and see good days. Do you love life? Do you want to see good days? Whoever desires that, 
Let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceit. Colossians 3, do not lie to another. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Remember who your new father is. That'll stop you from lying. Remember who your new father is. Have you received Jesus? Are you wanting more of Jesus? You can become like him to practice what, loving what he loves and acting how he acts. And you're not to act like the locals around you, but more like the God who made you. Towards this end, we are not to lie. We are to be like our father in heaven who does not lie. There's a father of lies, the devil, and there's a father of truth, God of the universe. Next time you think about lying, ask yourself, which dad am I imitating? Next time you think about deceiving someone, ask yourself, which father am I pleasing? Next time you have the chance to bend the truth or to inflate a story, ask yourself, who is going to be pleased by my words in this next moment? Next time you believe, you, next time you, fe- you hear that still voice inside your head about the state of who you are and your identity in Christ, you could ask yourself, and who's that coming from? And how does that line up with what the Bible says and not what I think is true? We are not to lie.